Sometime on GitHub, you get lucky. I was doing some research when I found this apparently empty GitHub repo for an NFT trading bot. But I looked around in the repo and I found a way to get the code. What does it do? Does it work? That's what we'll see in this video. So it all started when I was exploring the GitHub repo of OpenSea, which is the largest marketplace for NFT. So I was scrolling down through the different GitHub repo when one caught my attention. Plan the bot. I decided to explore it and I was super disappointed because there is basically no code, just a readme and a license. So I check out if there were different branches that we could select, a different type, but no, there was nothing. Hmm. So then I thought, okay, maybe they committed something, but then after they wanted to remove it for some reasons. So maybe in another commit, they remove everything. But then you can see here that there is just one commit. So most likely to remove any trace on GitHub, they probably reset the repo with just the initial commit. But then I saw there was some discussion about issues here. So I thought, hmm, seems like there's something going on. And then I saw this pull request. So I click on it and bingo, there is some code here. So then I went to file change and I found the code of the trading bot. But because it looks like that they're trying to remove the code from the GitHub repo, I was afraid that even this would disappear at some point. So I copied this in the GitHub of it, the blocks and that's what I'm going to show you. Okay, so first, I like to start my code exploration by checking out what we have in package.json to see what are the dependencies. So here we have the JavaScript client of OpenSea. Then here, this is a library for cryptography, so Truffle, so this is a framework for smart contract. Then Truffle HD web provider, this is used to import your private key. Then Web3, this is used to interact with the blockchain, but we can see that this is quite an old version of Web3, same for Truffle. Then a library for WebSocket. So I guess for a trading boat, it kind of makes sense that we have a WebSocket because we want to listen to events. And YAG, so I'm guessing this is a library to build command line tools. All right, so let's get out of here and let's see what we have in index.js. It seems like we have nothing, so it looks a bit unfinished already. Now let's see what we have in bin. We have axis.js. Okay, so it looks unfinished as well. But then we have CryptoKitties. So it looked like this is a trading boat for CryptoKitties and probably between CryptoKitties and OpenSea. Okay, so let's scroll down. We import some library. HD web provider to import our private key, Web3 to communicate with the Ethereum blockchain. So you have to replace this with your own infra URL. So this is uh, to connect to Ethereum. And here we import other libraries, including helpers.js. So we will see this after. And so it seems like the function that we need to call to start the whole process is crypto kitty arbitrage. And we need to pass it a couple of arguments. So including the mnemonic of your wallet, because if we do arbitrage, we'll need to send transactions and to send transactions, we need to pay the gas fees. Then we instantiate a provider object to connect to the blockchain. Then we instantiate a Web3 object. Then we get our ether balance for the address related to our mnemonic. Then we create a connection to OpenSea by using the OpenSea library. Let's keep scrolling down. So here I noticed that they use the var keyword. So it looks like some pretty outdated code because we don't really use the var keyword in 2021. This is a couple of global variables to store some state related to our boat. So let's keep scrolling down. And so basically, as long as we have money in our wallet, we will keep trying to run the boat. And so first, what we're going to do is we get a cheap crypto kitty. So we're going to see after how we found this kitty and after we are going to buy this kitty. And if we are successful, if we manage to buy it, then we're going to resell it, but for a higher price. 
So actually you decide the increment here with the increase percentage value. And here you also decide for how long your bid is going to last. So here this is for 30 days. And on OpenSea, you are going to create a sell order for your kitty and you're going to put all the parameter and that's it. So the idea is to take advantage of the price difference between two marketplaces. Um, so next we're going to see what we have in the helpers file because this is where we have the code because we have some important function there. Uh, all right, so let's go down. Okay, so we're going to use the API of CryptoKitty and basically we want a list of kitties including the kitty that are up for sale and we're going to order by the price. So we're going to get the cheapest kitty first. So what we get here is the cheapest kitty out of all the kitty that are up for sale. So after we launch our HTTP request, but the way we do this request, okay, so resp on resp n. okay, it seems to me that this is a very low level to do HTTP call. So I wouldn't do it that way. I would use Axios instead is way more simple. And so once we get the response from the API of CryptoKitty, basically we are going to store the result in the kitty variable. And after we are going to return this kitty with all the info we need to buy it. And so after we have this other function to buy kitty, so we pass it web three and the detail of the kitty we want to buy sales auction contract of CryptoKitty. So here we're going to instantiate a contract object to interact with this contract. And this is the address of the auction contract of CryptoKitty. And this address in our contract object, so it's a bit strange to do it that way. Usually when you instantiate your contract object, you put the address as well as an argument here after kitty ABI, we also update the address that send transaction. So I rarely saw this notation as well. It seems a bit outdated. Usually we specify the from field in a different way. Um, and after we are going to call the bid function on the auction contract to buy the kitty and we send enough ETH. And here in this object, you can also specify the from field that send a transaction. So it's a better way to do it compared to what they did here. And after we get the result, and at this point we are supposed to have bought the kitty, but the weird thing is that we don't return any value from this buy kitty function, but in the main script that was calling this function, we were actually expecting an answer to know if that was a success or not. So it seems that this part of the code is a bit, is a bit unfinished. All right, so that was for the helpers file and for plunder what we have here. Okay, so this is to wrap the functionality in a CLI tool that you can call directly from your command line. So it's going to pass different option that you specify your wallet mnemonic, wallet address, etc. So this is just for convenience, but what really matters here is CryptoKitties.js and helpers.js. So can you use this bot? It was written three years ago, it's clearly unfinished, and the author said in the readme that it's outdated and we shouldn't use it. If you believe in the CryptoKitties project, I think this is still a valid strategy, even though the code requires some updates. But the real reason I wanted to show you this is because this can be an inspiration for other NFT trading bots. For example, in the code, the part on axes is not done. Maybe you can try to implement it. And I'm really curious, do you have any idea of strategies for NFT trading bots? Let me know in the comment down below. If I see some interesting suggestions, I might create a tutorial on this. See you next time.